Marissa joke. A Marissa joke. These are very rare. It's going to be awesome, folks. <laughs> what do you call it when you're trying to stake down your tent? A mistake. How'd you know? I didn't even get to the end of the joke. Because I know all the He's jokes. He's too good. I'm too good. So yeah, you don't hit the stake properly. You hit your it's thumb. A mistake. Bam. Nailed it. Welcome back to another episode of No Cheers Frontiers. In this series, we travel all over the world on our KTM 1190 motorcycle. We ride two up, so I'm on the back, and we've been throughout the Americas, Central and South America, halfway up through Africa, and now we are on our Alaska trip. Dun, 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 dun. And in our last episode, we actually made it to the farthest northern point that you can go to by road in the Americas. Against all odds. Against yes. Everybody's bets that I would drop the bike, <laughs> break the limbs, Marissa would fly home. <laughs> we did it. We did it. It was so momentous. So much happened in the last episode that we had to actually break it up into two parts. Yeah. That's right. So welcome to part two. And we are heading down from Dead Horse, the most northern point, back down along the Dalton Highway, which has lots of stuff in store for us. And we're going to be passing over once again the Brooks Range, which is the highest mountain range with a pass on it by road in Alaska. So that episode will begin in three, two. Now you're supposed to go three. You guys get it, right? It's starting now. <laughs> so we had officially checked out of our expensive hotel. I wanted to show you around our room here a little bit. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to be staying another night. No. <laughs> and so we got back on the motor scooter and after we got some official stickers to put on the bike, and had put our stickers on the, the sign in an equal trade. Yep. We headed back south, the one direction. That's right. It was the end of the road, so now we had to come all the way back. And we didn't even get a mile out of town before yeah. I saw this lone Star Wars creature. I forget their real name, Muskox. Yes, very it good. Was, it was, <laughs> again, I was just like, oh my God. It's off in the frozen tundra of awesomeness, but like, I wanted that wow. Nat Geo close one and I only have like a, you know, a short zoom, but I'm <laughs> going across the little bog of eternal stench tundra trying to get pictures of it. And I got a couple snapshots of yeah. this crazy animal that I didn't know existed until the day before. <laughs> He didn't charge you. He didn't. Uh, you it didn't was a die. free photo shoot. <laughs> it was amazing. I stood by anxiously yeah. worried about the Marissa, whole situation. Yeah. 
I came back and she was very surprised. Yeah, it was great. I just saw a freaking Star Wars creature. Took a bunch of pictures. All while getting bit by black flies. I'll show you guys the picture. Insert here, video magic. <laughs> was it worth it? Heck yeah. This muskox was huge. It was insanely huge. He was massive. We're assuming it's a he, but we're not sure. Yeah. Uh, but super hairy, of course, because it's got to be warm. Horns. Yeah, horns. I mean, just the coolest oh, looking creature ever. Look. He knew yes. more than I did, and I don't know very much, but he... He's definitely like an animatronics type of creature yeah. from the Dark Crystal. 100%. For sure. <laughs> and he moved real slowly, again. Yeah. Like, you know. <laughs> Something on like a Chuck E. Cheese stage. Like, oh, I'm a Moksa. <laughs> That's awesome. I think that these things are, you know, the coolest thing that I've seen coming up to Dead Horse. I mean, nothing beats that last ride to Dead Horse, which proves you can't beat a Dead Horse. And then, just a little bit down the road after that, I was like, oh, Tim, Tim, oh, Tim, yes. pull over, pull over. She he said, turn around. I was like, what? Yeah. She's like, oh, there's a, a reindeer with big old antlers. I'm like, how did I miss that? I have like 8,000 <laughs> degrees of vision and she's got like a helmet and then like two degrees and two degrees. And so I turn around and sure enough, here is, you know, Rudolph. Rudolph himself. Don't, 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 don't. I mean, just a gorgeous specimen of a caribou with the full-on antlers. Yeah. And they're cool because, like, antlers, I think of, like, Rocky and Bowwinkle and, like, side stuff going on. <laughs> but these majestic beasts, they have, like, mm. they, they come out from their nose, which, well, not nose, but up and down. Yeah, and They have, straight. like, this straight-on. It was caribou hunting season. Yes. And so it's kind of sad because this guy was on the side of the road. The tundra is this waterbed of earth that you have to, you know, traverse in order to go hunting. And uh, so when the caribou are on the side of the road, they're, they're easy targets. And, you know, here we are with the camera snapping pictures. And it's a sure sign that they're hunters when a U-Haul van pulls up because people fly mm -hmm. in, rent a U-Haul van, and then drive up here because it's the cheapest thing. And, you know, a U-Haul van popped up and let off a dude and he was sneaking around and the U-Haul van went up ahead and that guy came out too. And this isn't a video about, you know, you shouldn't hunt and this, that, and the other thing. But in the moment for us who we were appreciating nature, yeah. it was sad to be like, ah, this might be the last pictures of this dude ever again. So sad, cause this guy's not gonna be around much longer. even though we like to think he scampered away. Yes, we, we are sticking to the story that he escaped he and did that escape. the hunter was a very bad shot. This is true. We'll find out this Christmas if we all get presents. <laughs> a foggy Christmas night. Christmas Eve. <laughs> we saw a gorgeous specimen. Um, it was yeah, really pretty. It was really beautiful. And, you know, we got to appreciate the moment for what it was to us, and other people can appreciate the moment for what it is to them. Yep. And, uh, and you know, I, I think the reindeer has a preference of, <laughs> of appreciation. We'll leave it at that. Mm -hmm. And we carried on down the road.
Brooks Range again. I mean, we had just passed through it the day before, but coming in the opposite direction, it felt like a whole new landscape. like the dolomites yes and i didn't see that going, going <laughs> no. <on. laughs> those are easy to see and it's not like we took a different road no <laughs> When we had come from Wiseman to Prudhoe Bay, we were running on empty, but we made it. Yay. And, you know, that's where the two gas stations are. Well, not Wiseman, but Coldfoot, which is very yeah. nearby Wiseman. So we figured, well, we're going to be fine. We got up. We can get back down. <laughs> right. <laughs> we came up to Prudhoe Bay. We're going to be fine coming back down. I got an extra gallon that has served me well throughout the years. <laughs> If I didn't have gas, I'd just live here. We'd set up tent. <laughs> yeah. This is where we'd live. We have fresh water. Yeah. Once it snows, <laughs> Our skeletons ride. would be right over there. So here on the Dalton Highway, when we talk about permafrost, it's that layer of ice and frost that's underneath the ground. But as you can see, when they built it, a lot of the permafrost has thawed. And so it's created this. Wiseman once again. We were going to camp in that spot where we had camped before. Yeah. We pulled into Wiseman and we set up our camp and we were super happy about everything that we had seen, the accomplishments that we had completed and just felt all around awesome that we had gone to Prudhoe Bay. Three happy newses. Newses. <laughs> the first happy news is even though I am wearing this, I almost don't have to. There are way fewer mosquitoes here than last time we were here. Second happy news is I just tested negative for COVID. Yay! Mm. I'm 
I'm no longer contagious and I'm no longer sick. So it's all these wonderful things. And the third awesome news is Tim just cooked dinner and it's not a can of soup. Yay! <laughs> it's delicious. It's pasta. <laughs> so we just had dinner. It was really good. But then we discovered dessert. Blueberries. <laughs> And we were 100% confident that we would, with the gas that we had in the tank, be able to make it to the gas station. There's so much Cold foreshadowing <laughs> there. It might as well be a spotlight. There's just, that's just, there's no mystery of what happens next. <laughs> we had very little gas. We knew we would make it. Stay tuned until next time where <laughs> something, may, something may or may not happen. Mm -hmm. Will we make it to Coldfoot without running out of gas? I think we will. <laughs> what do you think? We will see. We will see. Stay tuned for the next episode, and I hope you liked this one. If you did, please give us a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below. Double ding. And we'll be seeing you next time. Stay safe, everybody. Bye. Peace. And it's probably a, a taxpayer-funded road leading to the <laughs> Prudu, but Prudu, Prudu Bay. Prudu. Prudo. Prudo. <laughs> Didn't go there. That horse. Easy to spell, but <laughs> such a good name. It's a Tim type of town name. A Tim type of town. <laughs> <laughs>